Welcome back to the template tutorial series. This is video number eight. This video and the next video will cover my approach for integrating Lemur into my setup. In this video, I'll show you how I set up a USB MIDI connection, how to create MIDI CC faders in Lemur, and how to set up and control Cubase track visibility. If you plan on using Lemur to send any MIDI data for real-time playback, like for example controlling MIDI CC while playing your MIDI keyboard, then a Wi-Fi connection introduces too much latency. The solution is to use MIDI over USB. For that, I'm using an ordinary USB to lightning cable, which is pretty handy because it also keeps my iPad charged while it's connected to my PC. I use an app called MIDI Mux. Let me pull it up. You can get this app for free from the App Store. You'll also need to download and install the PC or Mac counterpart of this app on your desktop computer. I'll add a link to the developer's website in the video description below. So here in MIDI Mux, I've created a few MIDI ports for Lima to use. Port number one is used to send MIDI CC data. Port number six is for visibility buttons. And port seven return is for incoming messages from Cubase, which happen upon selecting a new track. Back to the Lima app. Let's pull up the settings and open more settings. In the MIDI targets section, you need to activate the MIDI ports that you're planning to use. These should match the ports you created using the MIDI Mux app. Incoming MIDI goes in the first column and outgoing MIDI messages in the second. And that's all there is to it. Now you should be able to send MIDI over USB. Next I'll show you how to add and configure a MIDI CC fader in Lima. To add a new fader, simply create a fader object. You can now tweak the placement, size, color and the behavior properties of the fader to your liking. Actually, let me get rid of this new fader and show you the rest of the setup on the leftmost fader on my screen, the orange one, which is my mod wheel. So you need to select which MIDI port your fader will use. That's defined by the target field here. Next, the type of MIDI message that the fader should send. Lemur can send any kind of MIDI messages. For this, we wanted to send a control change or a CC message. And finally, this field is the value of the controller. So that's where we define the number of the MIDI CC that we want to send. So by setting this orange fader to MIDI port one, control change and controller number one, I've created a simple mod wheel equivalent. One small remark, many people find it uncomfortable to work with faders and touchscreens. Personally, I've grown accustomed to it and find it pretty decent to use. So these here are the only MIDI faders in my setup. As you've seen in prior videos, I use Cubase visibility settings to keep tracks that I'm not working on hidden from view. This is how I've set it up. In Lima, I've created a number of custom button objects and set each of them to function in pad mode. I've configured each object to send out unique MIDI notes on MIDI port number six. For example, this first button, Woodwinds High, sends out a note on message for MIDI note number 100. Woodwinds Low sends 101 and so on. Now we have MIDI messages leaving Lemur whenever one of these buttons is pressed. So let's switch to Cubase. Open the edit menu and from there open Project Logical Editor. Project Logical Editor is an incredibly powerful tool and it has many different uses. So I might talk about that more at another time, but for now let's just focus on visibility. You need to create one Project Logical Editor preset per visibility button. I'll find my Woodwinds High preset. The top half of the window displays the conditions that Project Logical Editor is looking for, and the bottom half determines the action taken upon meeting those conditions. So for my Woodwinds High button, the preset looks for the following conditions. Container type is equal to track, and the name of that track contains the letter A between vertical bars, and property is set to event is empty. What this does is look for empty tracks with the letter A between vertical bars in the name of the track. 
And that's the prefix that I used for naming all of the high woodwind tracks. Now, once all three conditions are met simultaneously, then the bottom half of this window kicks into action, and the visibility of the track will be toggled, switching between hidden and visible each time you press the button. Because it's only looking for empty tracks, it won't affect the visibility of the track if it already has some data in it. Okay, so once you've finished setting up a preset, you should save it. Just click here to store a preset and give it a name that you can remember later because we'll need that. The final step is to configure a generic remote device to receive messages from Lima and then trigger corresponding project logic editor presets. You can do that by first opening device setup and you can click on this plus sign to add a new generic remote device. Here's the one I've created for visibility. You need to make sure that it's listening to the correct MIDI port. So from this drop down menu here, I've selected MIDI port 6 because that's the one I've used for my custom buttons in Lima. Next, the contents of the generic remote device. In the top half of the window, I've added a new line for each button. Define the type of message as a note on message and then set the address values to the same values that we used for the custom buttons in Lima, starting with a note number 100 for high woodwinds and so on. Also, make sure that in the rightmost column, the receive flag is activated. Now let's look at the bottom half of this window. For every line that you created above, a new line is created here automatically. Here we tell Cubase what we want it to do once it receives the message that we defined in the top half. The name fields are updated automatically based on the names above. The other fields should be set to command, then process project logical editor, and in the next field, you have to choose the name of the corresponding project logical editor preset that you created earlier. Once you're done, hit apply, and to save a copy of your generic remote device, you can hit the export button. And that's it. By now you should have a working button in Lima, which, when you press it, sends a message to Cubase. This message is then picked up by the generic remote device, and it triggers a project logical editor preset adjusting the visibility based on the conditions that you had defined. That's all for this video. In the next one, I'll go deeper into Lima, and I'll look at how to get Lima to follow your track selection in Cubase, and then display the articulations for that track, and how to use Lima for switching between the displayed articulations. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.